Now, the Queen was not in London, nor was she at Windsor Castle for the celebrations. Instead, she spent it at Sandringham, said to be a favourite residence of Prince Philip's. And for more on the special occasion and the weeks ahead, we are bringing into the programme right now Rafe Hadel Mancou. He's a royal commentator. He joins us right now from London. Rafe, always nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. A pleasure. Hello. So a lot to talk about today, but you know, I actually want to begin here with Prince Harry because as you know, he and Meghan went to the UK. It was their first visit uh, since they left the UK ahead of the Invictus Games. Uh, the two also had a visit with the Queen, uh, but it is comments that we heard from Prince Harry afterwards that has really irked some people in the UK. Uh, tell us about that. Yes, well, um, having not seen his uh, grandmother for two years, Prince Harry was uh, believed to have offered this olive branch of a meeting last week. Um, but if it was an olive branch, it certainly turned out to have rather a few thorns on that branch in terms of uh, the reaction that happened afterwards, given a rather explosive interview that he gave to American television. The reason that he came over, we believe, is because having not attended uh, the memorial service for Prince Philip, his grandfather, who died earlier, um, there was a lot of criticism of that. So um, uh, a 15-minute uh, meeting with the Queen had been arranged and a similar one with his father. But after that, he had made some pointed remarks saying that he wanted to make sure that she was protected and that she was surrounded by the right people, which had been interpreted as digs at both uh, his family as well as the royal courtiers, who have been doing a superb job protecting Her Majesty uh, during the last uh, two years of, of COVID, for example. And he also said that he was her closest confidant. Uh, a bit odd for someone who hasn't seen his grandmother for two years. Um, it's a bit of a shame that this has happened because the, the Queen had actually extended her own olive branch to the uh, Harry and Meghan by inviting them to take part in the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, which are happening in June to mark the Queen's 70 years on the throne. And that would have included perhaps appearing on the famous Buckingham Palace balcony, which is the most iconic uh, moment of, of any Jubilee celebration. And now, of course, the future of that must certainly be seen uh, as, as being in doubt. Now, I know Harry and Meghan are not the most beloved royals uh, right now in the UK, but what is their relationship with the family at this moment? And perhaps most importantly, what's their relationship like with the Queen? Well, certainly we know that the Queen loves all of her grandchildren and all of her family. Um, the Queen certainly, I think, understands that this may well be, unfortunately, uh, the last major balcony appearance of her reign. Uh, and certainly she wants all of her family to be in attendance for that. And uh, she does, of course, have uh, very, very warm feelings for her uh, grandson, and I've, I've no doubt that Prince Harry reciprocates that too. But uh, things are still very, very tense with the rest of the family. Let's just say it's an estranged relationship, and uh, nothing that he has said recently has done much to try to smooth those troubled waters with either his father or his brother. And uh, there's an explosive new book out by Tina Brown, um, who of course became famous for her uh, biography of Diana, which uh, reveals quite a lot of detail about um, the degree to which this, this falling out uh, between the two brothers, for example, happened even before uh, the emergence of Meghan Markle. So it's something that we're going to be watching very closely to see how, how prominent they might figure in any Jubilee celebration. But, you know, uh, I do want to talk about Her Majesty and the Jubilee. Uh, it will be around the Queen's official birthday in June, but her true birthday, as you know, uh, her true birth date, rather, April the 21st, was celebrated on Thursday. So let's now focus on, on the Queen. How is Her Majesty doing right now? Well, Her Majesty is rather frail. She is 96, uh, of course, and her main issue really is mobility rather than anything else. So there is a, uh, a policy now uh, with regards to the royal household that they advise any events that the Queen is expected to attend. The policy is now to assume that Her Majesty won't be attending and on the day a decision will be made. And that was quite a, a, a nice way of, of, of doing this because the Royal Palace, they know how excited people are to meet the Queen. And so to avoid cancelling and people being let down, they thought it was better to, for people to assume that she wouldn't be coming and then it's a bonus if she does come. Uh, but certainly when you see her in Zoom calls and so forth, when she's seated, she's still very animated. Uh, what role she will be able to play in the Platinum Jubilee? She hopes that she'll be able to go to as many events as possible, certainly the balcony appearance, of course. And also we're very much hoping she'll be at the memorial service 
at St. Paul's Cathedral, although it's expected that's for her own dignity. She will enter by a, a side door rather than coming up through the nave and will probably be seated before the cameras are turned on there. Now, we're, we're click, quickly running out of time here, Rafe, but I do want to ask you, as we count down to the Jubilee celebrations just weeks away at this point, anything in particular that you are looking forward to? Well, one of the things I find most encouraging, we have, of course, the great state events. There'll be a great Jubilee pageant. Um, there'll be fly pasts. There'll be the Trooping the Colour birthday pageant, as you say, and various other national events. But it's the fact that I don't know how many hundreds of private uh, streets and community centres are having their own great big street parties uh, with flags and bunting and it's really more than even 10 years ago or 20 years ago there's been a real outpouring of community support for the Queen and a real chance to build social cohesion and that's one of the great roles of monarchy is to unify a nation and bring everyone together in Britain we don't have wars of independence or national uh, revolutions to celebrate every year like or like Canada Day in Canada so in, in this country, it's royal weddings and jubilees uh, that really provide that opportunity to come together. And so let's just hope it's, it's good weather because in 2012, it was a complete washout. Yeah, quite literally with the rain falling down. But I will note very quickly, Rafe, we did not have a revolution either. We, we did it all by paper and signatures. Uh, but Rafe, thank you for this. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. I'm a Canadian too, so I'm there. We go. That. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for that, Rafe. We'll speak again. That's Rafe Hedel Manku, a royal commentator who joins us in London.